<laughs> that right there is a prime example of why I like to fish a jig in the fall. Gosh, look at that big old fish. Hey Bass Resource, James Niggemeyer here with the second video in a series of videos geared towards seasonal patterns and lure presentations. And when I hit the lake in the fall, I really like to throw moving baits. Whether it's a spinner bait or a square bill crank bait or a top water, buzz bait, something like that is what I really like to do. One of the most productive lures and my personal favorite is a jig. I love throwing jigs. That's a little swim jig. But when I get around targets like this lay down, I definitely like to pitch a jig. Want to be pitching a jig up in the heart of the cover and just seeing if there's some sort of fish utilizing that cover. Jigs have to be the most versatile lures in your boat. And the reason for that is you literally can fish them in every condition, every month of the year. The jigs are just incredibly versatile. And this video really is targeted towards shallow water jig fishing in the fall. Throwing moving baits, throwing reaction style baits, throwing things that, uh, that have a lot of action, that are moving horizontally through the water. Those are baits that generally get the nod when it comes to fall fishing. Well, this video is different because I'm focusing more on fishing jigs in the fall, predominantly in say water five foot or less, 10 foot or less. Fishing areas where bluegill or crappie or threadfin shad or gizzard shad, whatever it is that fish are gonna be pulling into an area to try to feed on because they're trying to fatten up for the winter. They're they know that cold water period's coming, especially like with me, I had water temperatures in the high 50s. Those fish know that winter is around the corner and with that they're trying to put the feed bag on they're trying to bulk up they're trying to know they know that lean times are coming so they're trying to definitely feed up for the winter and be as ready as they can you got the wind blowing in here it makes a little makes the uh, boat positioning positioning a little more challenging but it also will position those fish on these perfect little targets like this. So that's real good also. That current, those fish will take advantage of it. This would definitely be considered wind-driven current. There we go. Whoa, golly, look at that. I hit that one and it just shot out of there like a rock. Look at that fish. Holy, on the jig. Golly, golly, look at this fish. I mean, just where she was supposed to be, right on the lay down. Wow. <laughs> that right there is a prime example of why I like to fish a jig in the fall. Gosh, look at that big old fish. You gotta have the right jig for the right application. And for that lay down tree, that's a Strike King fluorocarbon flipping jig and a rage crawl on the back was exactly what the doctor ordered. Look how thick that fish is. Woo! I'm gonna put him in the live well and get a little picture session later. I mean, healthy, healthy, healthy fish. I've got this little flat, little slow tapering point and it looks like the water's somewhat clear over there. I'm gonna throw a swim jig on here and see if fish are just kind of moving and using it. Having a couple of different jig setups is really important in my opinion because then I could fish down the bank, I can fish through an area, and I've always got a jig to answer the scenario that's in front of me. And what I mean by that is whatever type of cover, whatever type of structure I'm coming up against, if I've got a couple of different jigs, I can still be really effective about catching fish. I'm kind of surprised I haven't busted one on this swim jig. It might be the time to maybe throw that little finesse jig some. This is a striking baby structure jig with a baby rage bug on there for a trailer. There we go, another one. <laughs> Picked up that little baby structure jig and started pitching around some of this isolated. He came off that piece of wood right there. Just because the water's so clear, that's another nice fish. I went with that baby structure jig, kind of a finesse jig get some more bites. That was cool. Did 
there's another one. <laughs> Boy, they're grouped up right in here. That's great. Nice little chunk. Definitely a little channel swing bank right here with some isolated wood. This, is, it looks like for numbers, and that's generally what's gonna happen. For numbers, a little finesse jig like that is definitely gonna get you some bites. And then for bigger fish, you obviously go with the pitching or fluorocarbon flipping jig to get bigger bites. So as I ease back into this flat, it's got this creek channel that winds around, but there's a lot of shallow water. I mean, I can see the bottom of some of these sections here. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and pick up the swim jig and try to kind of fan cast this area. There's one. No. Got him on the old swim jig. Yes. Look at that. Gosh, these fish are thick. They've been feeding up big time. Just throwing back in the very back of this little creek and just swimming that jig with the Rage Swimmer swim bait on the back. And I was able to get one of those fish. You just know there's some feeders back there. We'll put her back. Nice quality fish. That was awesome. This is great because I feel like now I've got my bases covered. I can go finesse, I can go flipping, and if I need to cover some water and throw a swim jig, I can do that too. That fish bit that swim jig, and he just kind of came up and matched the speed. He just came right up behind it, sucked it in, and kept coming at me. So I had to take a step back and pull that slack out of there. I was able to get a nice hook in. And that front is coming in, which makes it an ideal time for me to get bites. So I'm glad I'm out here before this rain comes. And you just know there's more to be caught too. There's one. Yeah. <laughs> Look at one on the swim jig. I'm sure there was some cover around there. Golly, look at that. These fish are healthy. They've been feeding up big time. They're getting ready for the winter to set in. We've had that one really hard cold snap, temp cooler temperatures out of it. Look how thick. He's definitely got something in there. Ooh, it's, it's hard too. I bet he's got a bluegill wedged sideways in that thing. Right in his belly, that bluegill sitting in there. Boom, boom, boom. I'll put her back. Oh, look at that. Look at the tail in there. She just ate, look at that tail in there, definitely got a bluegill in there and still wanted the Strike King heavy cover swim jig and a Rage swimmer on the back, like a spinner bait with no blades. And I'll do some different things based on my trailer types. Sometimes I'll put a little uh, Menace Grub on the back there, which is like a little double tail. Sometimes I'll put a little Rage Craw little crawfish type imitation back there it really depends on what's going on this this time of year in the fall I like something that's bait fishy I feel like the fish are feeding on shad so I wanted a swim bait trailer there so that I could imitate something that they're actively pursuing in the water column so the swim jig is coming into play that's pretty cool typically you'll find that one jig really shines and that's the one you'll really want to push to the forefront and then there are days when you have like what we're doing right now where this all that cloud cover up there and we know it's going to rain tonight and between it's a wednesday right now wednesday afternoon and then it's going to fall in temperature so the barometric pressure is falling these fish are feeding whoa <laughs> That little guy took off with it and started swimming at me. And when I hit him, he came right out of the other side. Nice little chunk. These fish are healthy in this lake. That one was on the uh, baby structure jig on a little fence line. Big old lay down log over here underneath the water. Gotta be able to get them on this flipping jig. I like to think of jig fishing. I, Golly, look at that one. Golly. Yeah, 
<laughs> look at that one. Oh my gosh. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Got it right in the roof of the mouth. Yeah, that's that striking fluorocarbon flipping jig. It's a hack attack version with a rage craw on the back. Look at that gigantor. Beautiful fish. Wow. I think I might try to get another picture with her too. That was exciting. I was just talking about kind of like being a surgeon or a mechanic. You got to have a type of jig for everything you're going to come up against. I definitely believe in in simplifying my my fishing, but I definitely think you're going to hook and land more fish if you have the right jig, the right rod setup, and the right line combination with reel. All that really goes into play, really makes a big difference. Let's just have a, a more fun time on the water. I'm using three different rods for my jigs. For flipping, I like the Lose Magnum Heavy Cover, and then the Pro TI, Lose Pro TI. It's a 7 5 to 1 gear ratio, 11 ball bearing system, and I've got 20 pound to 16 to 20 pound gamma fluorocarbon line with just a Greg Hackney fluorocarbon flipping jig with a Rage Craw, 3 8 ounce. When it comes to the swim jig, I use a couple different rods. One of them's the Magnum Bass Rod 3. It's a Lose Custom Speed Stick. And then I've got the Lose Custom Pro Reel, 7 5 to 1 gear ratio or 8 3 to 1 gear ratio. And I like 30 pound test braided line. That's that Strike King Tour Grade braided line that's brand new. And that's the Hack Attack Heavy Cover Swim Jig with a Rage swimmer swim bait trailer on the back i think believe that's the three and three quarter inch and i've trimmed it down and lastly the finesse jig rod which is a seven foot medium heavy and i've got the team loose hyper mag with 12 pound to 14 pound gamma four carbon and then the, the striking structure bug with a rage bug is a trailer Man, if that doesn't think if that thing doesn't look like a crawfish nothing will i like the isolated cover in the fall you find this isolated cover generally in the fall you're going to have a drawdown like this where that water level is going to come down a little bit in some lakes it's going to be more than others but when you have that drawdown those fish have a, a those fish have less to really get around there's not as much cover in the water and those isolated targets become the key place to put your lures. I basically picked my top three jigs for shallow water jig fishing in the fall. The jigs that I used, I feel like cover all my bases. If the fish generally want something that's moving horizontally through the water col column with a lot of tail wag type action, something that looks like bay fish, that swim jig is the go-to. When I wanted to cover water in areas that were somewhat void of cover, so that worked well for that. When it came to little creek channels, a little bit clearer water, little stick ups and different things like that, that's when I reached for the baby structure jig, 3 8 ounce size. And then lastly, of course, the star of our show, Strike King Hack Attack Fluorocarbon Flipping Jig. That is something that I'm gonna go to when I know that braid's gonna be a little, little overwhelming, a full size jig's gonna be maybe too much. It's just a little bit more compact, a little more downside. Green pumpkins, your black and blues, you're, the darker the water, the darker the jig color. The clearer the water, the lighter, more natural I'm gonna choose. Generally, this time of year, I'm fishing in and around the backs of pockets, the backs of bays, creeks. The bait fish are migrating into the backs of these pockets, into the backs of these creeks, and even those wind-blown sections like I was out on the lake. Sometimes it's the creek channel swings in these little bays and pockets, little drains or ditches, like we like to call in East Texas, areas where Things are mainly flat, but then they have a little bit of depression. Basically, if the lake wasn't there, if water was, say, if it rained and water was pouring out of those meadows, it would settle into a low spot. Those ditches are low spots where water is going to settle to. That's a lot of the times in these lowland type impoundments where you're going to find fish that'll gather right on the lips or actually in the channel itself or up on the flats. Those lead in areas where you had some depth relatively close to the shallow flats and different things like that, but also that isolated cover was key. Anytime you had that isolated wood, it seemed like there were some fish there. So, so those are my three favorite jig setups in the fall. Whenever I'm out and I want, and I feel like a jig is gonna get me more bites, those fish just don't wanna chase. Maybe they're tighter to cover. 
maybe a front's coming through and some bigger ones are out feeding. I definitely want to make sure that I've got a jig on my deck all year round and even in the fall. Even though I know we think about top water and jerk baits and spinner baits and such, crank baits and so forth. And that's a great time to throw all those things, but the jig can get overlooked. Make sure you've got the jig on your deck during your fall fishing trips. It's my favorite bait, as I said. It catches a lot of big fish, as you've seen. And man, there's something about that jig bite that's just a lot of fun. If you're not a jig fisherman, my suggestion to you is to go out and take a jig rod, go to your favorite lake, pond, somewhere, and just, just spend a lot of time throwing that jig till you get comfortable with it, till you get comfortable with what it feels like when it's on the bottom, what it feels like when you're pulling it over wood, what it feels like when you're pulling it over rocks and so forth, and the action that it gets. For those guys that don't throw a jig much, I hear that a lot from guys. I don't like a jig because I'm not sure what it bite feels like, or I don't have a lot of confidence in a jig. Well, the only way to get confidence in it is to get down to the lake, go fishing with it till you get a bite. And that first bite's gonna be addictive, and you're gonna go into the next one, and then the next one, and then soon enough, Jig would be one of your favorite lures in your arsenal, just like it is for me. Appreciate you guys watching my YouTube channel. Please like and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, if you're new to it, please subscribe to it. Thanks for watching. Good fishing.